Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Private Property Farming Podcast. My name is Mbali Nwoko, and I'm your host, uh, as always, every Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. Today, we're speaking about farming stock fells, and we're speaking to a serial entrepreneur, Nicholas Manike, who started his farming stock fell, and we want to know what exactly does the stock fell focus on, and how many members does it currently have? Um, and I suppose if you're looking to go into farming, I think the stock fell approach is a method um, um, to aid you and ease you, uh, assist you rather with, um, you know, getting some capital or um, startup capital to start your farming enterprise. So if you have any questions for Nicholas, please feel free to comment um, uh, wherever you're watching us from. And uh, again, if you missed this uh, conversation, you can catch it on YouTube on our farming podcast playlist uh, under the Private Property Farming YouTube channel. So let's get straight into it. Nicholas, how are you doing? Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thanks to you and the team and uh, to the listeners or to say to the viewers out there. Um, it's uh, lovely and a pleasure to mm -hmm. be talking to you about a topic that is really close to my heart. Mm. Yeah, no, thank you for making the time and obviously starting your business. But I know before we move into the farming stock fills or our topic of discussion today, you're a serial entrepreneur. So tell us about other business interests that you're currently doing and why you decided to uh, start an enterprise within the agricultural sector. So um, I'm in the music business or let's say entertainment. Um, I'm the music exec or the music peer. Um, I've worked with uh, quite a lot of uh, artists where I was also a PR manager for Ambitious Entertainment. I also have my PR and communication company. Not only that, but also um, I'm a property investor, obviously, um, the way we have the stock, we, we have the stock firm, um, the property stock firm. Uh, we invest in student accommodation. We build, we build a backyard uh, lower cost housing as well in townships, uh, you know. So mm. yes, there are there are also other a couple of other businesses that um, I do uh, in other industries. But over the road, in everything we do, um, is that uh, every day, obviously, every now and then, you need a pasta, a policeman, or whatever. But the good thing is that. In our, in, in our daily lives, we need a farmer three times, meaning we need to eat three times in a day. And mm -hmm. um, with the population growing dramatically so, I mean, we moved from around uh, 50, um, we were estimated to be around 53 million in the country. And uh, it is said now, it has increased to roughly to be from 59 to 60 million. So what does that tell you? It tells you that the demand for food it will always be there. The demand is crazy. I mean, we don't produce enough uh, chicken or eggs. And um, so obviously with that, I always wanted to be a farmer because my grandfather was a farmer. He was well known in the community. He had a lot of cows, chickens and everything. And he had a huge land, you know. So it was something that I always wanted to do. But obviously with the times where we live in, most of our youth, we want to be on TV, we want to mm. wear suits, we want jobs that, you know, are on spotlight, there's drama. No one wants to be um, in the farm. And that's where the real money is. We want to eat every day. So um, I saw an opportunity, I saw an app where I know that there are, um, you know, black farmers land but they don't have capital on the other hand you have people who wants to venture into farming where they have capital but they don't have the skills of farming that's where the concept came of us saying look man let's start the stock for farming the reason we didn't want to specify to say this is poultry it's because we our focus yes it's livestock and also we're looking at venturing into uh, crops but the crops obviously the main thing we want to focus on um, in the future is uh, your hydro, hydro, hydronic uh, farming, which I think you are also part of because obviously um, these advantage and disadvantages of anything that we're doing. So um, I gathered my friends. I'm like, look, we, we are in a big city. Um, what we can see is that we want to be in farming and we don't have 
a farm mm. around. Why can't we partner with other farmers uh, who are struggling financially? Mm. We all come together and they have the skill, we have money. We come together, we put the money, we invest in different assets, which it could be uh, poultry, farming, piggery, or any other uh, product that mm. we feel like it will sell to the market. That's how the concept started, mm. by bridging that gap. Mm. And so far, we've been um, you know, uh, progressing. Um, so far, we have close to 50 uh, members. And uh, now, if we, obviously, there's a lot of people from different other provinces who say, look, I want to join you guys. I like the concept. Um, and it makes sense to me because I don't have time. But I'm, I love farming, but I don't have time to, to be there in the farm. So what we mm. do is that... As members, we contribute money collectively. We take the money um, we, with our partnered uh, farm where we say, okay, look, we would like to focus on poultry uh, for now because it's something that is easy to enter, but it's not easy as it looks, you know. So we take the money, we mm -hmm. buy the equipment, we buy everything. Now, because they have time, they have the skills, probably they've done this before, and then they will look after the chicks, feed, make it sure that make sure that everything goes accordingly. Once we see that the chicks have grown now to be mature asset, we take it, we sell it to the market, which obviously we sell it to the public. We are selling it to a restaurant. There's also a contract that we have with another food franchise uh, retail store. Uh, that is obviously focusing in Ekasi. So we supply supplying our chicken to them. Um, you know, they tell us the specs that we need at least 1.3 kg to 2.1.3. Um, there's a certain way you need to cut it, so we supply them. Um, but obviously also we're looking at expanding into retail now, which is what is something that has always been there. We want to um, form our own mixed portion brand that will be compete with the likes of your Rainbow, your Goldie, because Goldie is a global company um, which we are, you know, all the chicken they come from outside the country. So we want to say, look, let's let's have our own brand that will compete with them, which we have uh, the Mzansi uh, meat. Whereas I'm under Mzansi meat, we having Mzansi meat pushing where the primary product there is chicken, you know, you know gizzards, feet, and all those things. That's some of the product mm -hmm. that we'll be selling to the market. So obviously there's mm -hmm. opportunities uh, that are being opened um, amongst like logistics, other guys who are, we, we say, look, there are opportunities here because now we will have to transport um, everything that we're doing from the farm or from the a warehouse, obviously, to the client. So that's how the concept uh, started, actually, uh, the farming, you know, the stock for farming. Because yeah, stop, stop. when you think of farming, it takes a lot of money and a lot of skills. Alone, it might be tough, but collectively, it might be easy because you are not bringing your own money. We are all coming mm -hmm. together to raise capital, and uh, whatever we feel like now, it's out there in the market. We can be able to say, okay, let's venture into this and supply the market. So that's how we started, basically. Great. So, Nicholas, you mentioned that you have 15 members right now within the stock file, and you've already identified the commodity, which is chicken in this perspective. Um, and uh, furthermore, it's like you're providing access to finance and markets for the farmer. So tell us a little bit more um, around the member's contribution. What's the minimum amount that a member can contribute into the stock file? And how does the farmer then repay back the amount invested in their business? So, so yes, so we have a, a draining fee and uh, obviously there's a monthly contribution that um, you know, a member is contributing, which we have a draining fee of like, which is uh, 500 um, once off. And then monthly we contribute 1,500 which we use the 500 obviously for, uh, you know, to maintain and also to make sure that we feed. So how we have structured our uh, stock for farming, um, the farmer actually doesn't really uh, have to repair us in the long run. So what we do is that we take the capital and we say, look, we want to do one, two, three, four, five. We buy the equipment, we buy everything with the farmer. We are hands-on. So it's not like, 
give them finance and we say run with the farm without us. We are really hands-on when it comes to what's really happening in the farm so that we also understand um, how is the process of nurturing and everything. So when it comes to payment, what we, we negotiate on, we negotiate on a certain percentage. So basically it's like we are renting the farm because we are paying the farm a rent, of number one. Secondly, we are paying the farm to look after our assets. So, so, so we agree on a small percentage that look, in this uh, profit of our selling, each and every chick or chicken that we sell, you're going to get uh, this portion or this percentage. That's our agreement. So each and every farm, our agreement can differ depending on what they do for us. So yeah. with the current farmer we are having, for example, we, we, we pay we, uh, uh, rent because our staff is there in his uh, a farm, obviously, which it covers the electricity and water and security, but also mm. we pay a small portion, which is uh, almost 7% to 10% of the revenue that we, we are doing from that, we pay back to, to the farmer. So that is a okay. situation. Yes. So, so we're not really saying, look, we give you 100,000 and uh, do whatever you want. No, we are hands on. Hence, mm. um, the deal, it's not with the farmer where, where the, the company said, let's have an agreement with the farmer where the farmer will supply us with the chicken. No. The, I, the, 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 the deal we have, it's with us as the stock for farming. Hence, the farmer, when everything is done, we take it and we sell it to the market. So we mm. agree that you're going to get to this percentage. So obviously he knows what is the need for, for him. Um, but also um, there are farmers that say, look, I have a land. Um, I'm, I'm willing to give you the access to the land to utilize it. So when we come in, we will have to provide obvious security. We'll have to hire staff in that particular farm to make sure that they take care of our assets while mm. they're there. They, so they follow the processes of everything to make sure that the, 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 the chicken grows, you know. So that's what we're basically doing. But obviously, um, it is something that we have to collectively meet um, and have an AGM to discuss to say, guys, we, are, we, we, we want to do one, two, three, four, four five. So the, the members or the investors are not um, involved in the daily operation of the farm. We have staff, we have management, and everyone mm. where we have a process of doing things. But at the end of the day, everything that happen, that is happening, we need to go back to our members to say, guys, this is what this is the report. This is the AGM where we report in details. This is what is really happening in our farm. This is so far how we are selling in terms of um, uh, supplying out there. This is the agreement that we have. This is how much they're going to pay us. Because remember, as the stock fell uh, farming, it's only now where we are saying we need to register this as a business. We are not a business. We are an association currently. Mm, mm. So as an association, we can't, because we're not registered, we can't trade as a business. So we only use it to, um, to gather the finance, you know, to contribute. Once we done, hence we move the finance into the farmer's account so that we can be able to operate. So now it's when we said, look, we need to register this as a PTY so that we can be able to run as a business, so that we can be able to pay SARS, so that we obviously we need to pay uh, uh, the farm uh, cost, you know, uh, the farming cost, which every month we mm. have cost, obviously, that we need to settle. So mm. the profit that will be left we are planning to pay our members as a dividend. So basically, we are planning mm. to make shareholders rather than just members. Once they are shareholders, we will be able that they own a certain percentage of the business. I see, it's like I see, um, I see, I see. It's, it's like a franchise. You see a franchise, how they they do a franchise. It's set up. It's set up. Yes. Mm. So a franchise, you own the franchise, but you don't really own the brand. The brand is controlled by the, the company that started the, the franchise. 
So as you yeah. buy the franchise, yes. So that's how we're packaging this. So that as a member, as much as you are a member, you are a shareholder, you're not involved in the daily operation of the business, we will run the business. So you don't have to worry about being dirty and getting, you know, dating. We will do it for you. All you have to do is to come on board, understand how we work, what is it exactly that we're doing, what to expect, obviously, in terms of revenue, and then we work with those funds. But we're trying to do workshops and also do a uh, health month where all our investors come to the farm, where also they, we are all dressed in like farmers, obviously. So we, we invite different speakers around farming so that they get to understand the industry they're in. Because most people, they just want to invest money and get their money. What really happens, they don't know what's the process of growing those chicks. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't know that there's a, a flu season. They don't know that this is how you need to feed. They don't know that there's a certain temperature that you know it needs to be there. They don't know anything. So now yes. we're trying to do a workshop so that they understand what we do on the farm on the daily basis. They understand and they ask relevant questions that they hardly ask so that they get to understand so that even when we face with challenges, when we explain to them, they understand what we're really talking about. So basically this is just to, uh, to, 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 to say, look, get involved. Don't just put money and you don't know what is really happening with your money. And uh, also this is to try to make young people to have more interest in the farming rather than all of us going in the glamour, you know, rather than all of us mm -hmm. wanting to wear suits and be a corporate, you know, hustler or whatever that we do in the corporate. We are saying the youth can get involved. So we, 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 we're planning or we have programs in place where we are planning to go to uh, all these provinces. While we're going to the provinces, we will have uh, programs where we will deal obviously with the communities to say, guys, you can do this collectively as a community where you can feed or you can have a company where the company can be able to, uh, sub, you, can, you can supply your local retailers, whether it mm. can be any big uh, retail that you know. I don't like to mention names, but the big retailers that, you know, we know that are out there where we buy in the daily. We can sign an agreement to say, we will supply uh, this region or we will supply Pumalanga. So if we can have different groups that we are controlling, but we have presence in each and every province, we will be able to know that in this province, this is how many farmers we have partnered, partnered with. This is the team we are having, whatever that they do, because this helps them also to have access to the market because we are organizing them. But if they are not well organized, they can't give one farm and not give others. But if we say, no, we are collectively, everything that we are supplying, we are supplying at the stock farm farming, and this is what we do. There won't be any uh, issues about the, the access in the market. We will be able right. to access the market. First, secondly, we are not depending on government to come and help us because we have investors who are putting money each and every month. But obviously, it's a concept that um, so far, uh, we've, the, the government has tried to engage with us to say, look, this is very uh, a good initiative that would like to get involved so that we can teach young people about farming, especially um, when it comes to livestock, livestock uh, and crops as well. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Nicholas. It sounds like you're gradually growing and I'm glad that you are obviously making use of experts in the industry because farming is quite technical, you know, um, and bringing new financial models and concepts need to be um, thoroughly, I suppose, uh, yeah, uh, thoroughly looked at, uh, especially so that the farmer wins at the end of the day as well as the investor. But for people that have listened to this podcast and our conversation this evening, where can they get in touch with you with regards to the farming stock fell? Um, just so that they can get more information in terms of the membership fee, you said it's 500 rand, the monthly uh, payments is 1.5, but then we didn't, weren't able to um, touch base on the, um, the the return on investment. You know, does, does, uh, does the investor get their money every 
every two months, every six months, or on an annual basis. But I, I believe that you know um, you could have that conversation with a potential investor. So where could people find your information um, and uh, who are interested in the farming stock file, both from an investor's aspect as well as from the farmer's side? If you've got any um, contact details to share or email address, uh, I think uh, our audience will appreciate it. Yeah. Yes, so our website is uh, www.stockfellfarming.co.za. Uh, also, you're more than welcome to WhatsApp us or call us on our you know, line, which is 071-234-6701. Or you can email us info at stockfellfarming.co.za or stockfellfarming at gmail.com. One of them, we are also available on all social media. Um, we're trying to engage with, uh, you know, uh, different uh, farmers and also people who want to be part of this. We would like you to come. And uh, yes, uh, follow us on social media, be in touch. Um, and uh, as much as we're starting this, also it, I would advise do your due diligence, do your mm. research, and make sure that you are Happy with everything, with the paperwork, is it legit? Ways that you need to know all the right information mm. before you can invest your money. Because I know someone, someone, someone will see this and be like, okay, um, I'm gonna start <laughs> this, and then people are being lewd. All I'm saying, do your due diligence, um, do your research, and make sure that you go with the winning team. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time this evening, Nicholas. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Great. And that was Nicholas Manika, who is a serial entrepreneur, and uh, he started um, the farming stock file, which he mentioned. Right now, they've got about 15 members recently started, um, and also they're just gradually growing with the expertise of the farmers that they're investing in. And they assist you not only with access to finance, but markets as well. Um, they help, help you buy all the, the capital intensive uh, resources required to start a farm. You know, they said that they're open to. Um, um, I suppose male farmers, female farmers, black, white, young or old, uh, I think. But it's most importantly just starting a, a stock file to support farmers within the industry and also most importantly for food security, um, as you would have heard uh, him say today. So if you need to reach out to Nicholas, please go on to the, their website, which is www.stockfilefarming.co.za. They are also on social media, which you could reach out to them and find out a little bit more about monthly investments, return on investment, and um, right now they're currently investing in chicken farming. So if you're a chicken farmer that wants to do business with them, I presume Nicholas would be the right person to speak to. Thank you so much for joining us this evening on the Farming Podcast brought to you by Private Property. I will be back on your screens um, on, the, on, on, on Thursday at 8 p.m. And so if you missed this conversation, please go to our YouTube channel and continue to follow us on social Social media and maybe put out what topics you'd like to hear from us discussing on the show. But that's it for me. I'll see you then. Bye bye.